In 2005, so 11 years prior to this past fall semester beginning, Oklahoma Christian sent a recruiter down to Naperville, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. And this recruiter went to a Church of Christ and spoke at the Church of Christ. And in this Church of Christ youth group was a young lady by the name of Brian. And Brian was a junior in high school. And that night, she was sold on Oklahoma Christian University. And she was given a t-shirt from Oklahoma Christian University. And she made up her mind that night, I'm going to OC. A year later, she graduates high school. And she wants to go to Oklahoma Christian but she doesn't have the money. So she decides that she's going to go to school, cosmetology school, and she's going to practice that so she can save some money to go to Oklahoma Christian. She does that for several years, and then she decides that's not getting her there fast enough, so she joins the Army. She becomes active duty. And while she's in the Army, she meets this guy, and she kind of likes this guy. He's also in the Army. And one of the first things she tells him is, when I get out of here, I'm going to Oklahoma Christian University. Well, she finally finished her service, and the GI Bill provided her an education. And this past fall, with her OC t-shirt that she's now had for 11 years, she arrived on the campus of Oklahoma Christian, a 27-year-old freshman. Because of her age, she actually doesn't have to attend chapel. <laughs> and she attended chapel 70 times during the fall semester. Oh, and that guy she met? Well, he also finished up in the Army. And they got married. And he's a freshman at Oklahoma Christian University. I love it when students come to Oklahoma Christian. I really love it when they bring students with them to come to Oklahoma Christian. <laughs> So there's a story that took place over 11 years. OC is home for honesty. OC is home for perseverance. Here's the final story. A couple of years ago, we had a student by the name of Ash. Ash was a, um, was a master's student in our engineering program. And he had a friend who had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. That's a terrible disease. Lou Gehrig's disease progressively robs you of your ability, your ability to, to, to move and to function and to communicate. You cannot speak. And Ash's friend was having trouble speaking. And so he knew, after talking to Steve Mayer, one of our professors in engineering, that he had both the skill and the opportunity to put together some software and some hardware that might provide some text-to-speech capability for his friend. And he put that together. It was a pretty rudimentary system, but, but it worked okay. Well, he passed on that information to Steve Mayer and a group of students that formed actually last spring. Um, Josh and Aubrey, and Preston, and Tyler, electrical and computer engineering students. Finishing their junior year, they take up the baton, and they put together this software and hardware system that allows people who cannot use their physical body to actually use their eyesight to spell things out on the computer. It's gaze, eye gaze technology. So with a, a computer and a software system, individuals can, um, they can surf the web and they can, uh, they can keep their calendar. They can email people. They can turn lights on or off. They can turn on alarms. They can keep a journal. And most importantly, they can, because they can no longer speak audibly, they can actually use their gaze to text to voice speech. Well, these four students had put this together and they brought on with Russ McGuire, one of our uh, faculty members who works in entrepreneurship at the university, they brought on two other students in the business college, uh, Jevin and Kevin, one an accounting fellow, one a marketing fellow, and they are now actually in 
the Governor's Cup. That's what it used to be called. It's now the Love's Entrepreneur Cup. I kind of like the Governor's Cup, uh, Governor Keating. And they are in the process of, of moving through the competition. Now, by the way, we received word late this afternoon that competition is going on. They have actually made it to the finals that will be taking place tomorrow. But what they are doing is actually putting together software and hardware that will be marketed in their business plan for $3,000, where the things that you can buy now off the shelf is more than $20,000, and it's not as good a system as what our OC students have put together. So what they are doing is actually bringing into the mainstream market the opportunity for people who are suffering from Lou Gehrig's and similar diseases, the opportunity to continue to communicate with their loved ones. Now that sounds pretty good in the abstract. On January the 10th, this group of students took their working system down to South Oklahoma City to an ALS support group meeting. And they demonstrated their system to all of these families. A gentleman by the name of Carl got himself in front of their computer system and for 40 five minutes, Carl, who has ALS, used the system. Carl said two things. One thing he said to the students, he said, students, I'm not leaving here until you promise to get me one of these systems. And the second thing, he said it over and over again during those 45 minutes to his wife Janice to whom he has not been able to speak for some time. He told her by text to audio, I love you. Two weeks later, the students went down to Chickasha, where Carl and Janice live. You see, they had determined that Carl's computer system at home could support what they had put together. They bought a larger monitor, and they went down, and they installed that system in Carl in Janice's home. And I want you to watch this video. Carl is number eight or nine in his family really? to have ALS. And ALS, if you've seen one case, you've seen one case, they're all different. His sister died in it in 2014. Even though we were familiar with ALS, we never dreamed it would happen to him. I wanted Carl to go to the doctor right off the bat, but he wouldn't do it because he said, I know what it is and there's nothing they can do for me. It's been a great way for us to communicate. We used all the other methods before, but you know, those things no longer work. Uh, we did sign language, the boogie board, uh, texting, but now we completely rely on the eye gaze, and it's been wonderful for us. I stayed always frustrated, and speaking was so much of my life. I get to tell Janice every day I love her. Janice and I read Bible every day. We're just thankful for what all it can do right now, and I don't know what we would have done without it, and I'm just really grateful for OC. This literally gave me a lift in life. It was a lifesaver. I love this class and thank God for them. It's hard to believe they developed this program. Well, we just can't thank you enough for what all you have done. Just, there are no words to tell you how much we appreciate it. This is a journey of faith because we don't know what tomorrow holds. And we just give it to God that um, he will see us through. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. OC is a place for honesty and perseverance. OC is a place for life changers. And I want you to look right over there in that corner because there are the students and there is Carl and Janice.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, God bless you. Uh, we, we're so thankful for you and what you make possible at Oklahoma Christian. We, um, we love our students, and we love how our students can help change the world. And you all make that possible. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of tonight. And we'll see you next year in Washington, D.C. at the Museum of the Bible. God bless you.